good morning how's it going everybody uh those of you that know have been following along know that i've been over here building this paver patio it's almost finished needs a few few last touches but i'm gonna i'm gonna pause on that for now to make a make a video uh over here i'm gonna do more of a a diy show you how you can do some pavers yourself um the customer wants a little pad to set their trash can on so it's a real simple real simple job i'll show you how you can do something similar very easy you could use these same skills to do something bigger like a patio or a walkway um but you know the fir first thing you need to figure out whatever you're going to try to do with your pavers is like how big you want to do it in this circumstance you're trying to do a trash can pad so yeah you could measure the can see how big you want better thing to do go ahead and lay you some pavers out go ahead and lay, lay you some pavers out make sure it's a good size um and then start building to that because i've laid these pavers out where i have hardly any cuts i may have a few small cuts on the border block um but if you're doing this at home and you don't want to do a border then you could do this with zero cuts i mean cuts aren't aren't that hard to make anyways if you've got a diamond blade you could put on an angle grinder but anyway uh, i'm gonna try to keep this video short and sweet and instructional so we've got we've got our blocks laid out i know the size now i know what size of hole i need to dig my hole needs to be six inches wider i mean we're butted up against the the house and the concrete so it needs to be six inches wider on this side and on that side so i'm gonna lay that out dig it out put my base in there and then we'll, we'll go from there all right to do a small job like this you only really need basic hand tools um i like a couple different sizes of levels i use a six foot here uh it's really probably too big for this uh, i just don't happen to have a four foot with me if you have a four foot that would be better a four foot and a two foot you need a tape measure some sort of trial uh a mallet shovel and a tamp you can pick these up relatively inexpensively at your lowe's or home depot 30 40 dollars um I like to use some turf paint just to kind of mark my layout that and we may end up using some we may end up using some string line um, obviously i'm going to i have an excavator here so i will use that to dig this out but it would not take long to dig this out by hand um, but i just can't really afford to not save the time since it's the machine is here so i'm gonna get set up dig this thing out and then I'll show you how to start on your base. Um, something like this, four inches of base is adequate. Four inches of base, one inch of screed, sand, and then the thickness of your pavers. So four inches plus one inch, five inches. The thickness of these pavers is two and three eighths inch. So your total depth is gonna be seven, and three eighths inches deep uh, which it may or may not matter for you to be real precise unless you're trying to butt up to a concrete edge like this so i do need to be pretty precise um, and when we put our sand in there we don't compact the sand until afterwards um, so it generally compacts about three eighths of an inch so i'm going to try to build this to where the pavers sit three eighths of an inch high that way when i compact everything it comes down perfectly level with the, the concrete. You don't have to be super exact at this stage. Like I say, I want to go six inches beyond the, the pad. The reason you do that, I mean, you see a lot of times DIY paver jobs, if they do any base at all, they're only doing their base, the widths of their pavers. Well, that doesn't give that the edge of that paver any support and you'll get your pavers starting to roll off. So. You always want to go wider four inches would probably be fine here but it's not going to hurt to go six inches either so that's what i'm going to do all right the next step after you've got a dug out get as much of the loose dirt out as you can go ahead and take your tamp compact it around try to get make sure that soil is nice and firm
All right, next step, I'm gonna show you how to set up some strings. I could really do without even using them here or something like this, but I'll show you how to use them. All right, since we've got concrete over here, I can't put a stake in the ground. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie my string around one of these paver blocks. And I'm gonna set one of these larger retaining wall pieces in front of it to have extra weight. Set one on this side, one on that side. Okay, see now I can pull this string across there and I can actually put a little tension on it to my stake without dragging that off in there. What we're trying to do is I'm going to set my strings to the final elevation of the top of my pavers. That way I know where that's going to be and I can take measurements off the strings as I'm building this up. And for instance, I will I know thickness of pavers, two and three eighths inch, inch of sand, that's three and three eighths. So when I build my base up, I want it to be three and three eighths inches away from my string. And it also gives you a chance you can manipulate the strings and figure out where do you want your pavers to sit. Um, I want I want this to obviously we're trying to match up with the the concrete over there. That's why those lines are sitting right down on the concrete. Um, but on this side, I got some discretion where I can kind of decide where I want them. That's good there. This side's about an inch lower than that side. Okay, next step is to take your base material, put it in the bottom. Um, so what should you use as base material? What I like to use, there's several different things you can do. The best and easiest option is to use this rock here. This, I'm gonna open these doors up. This rock, you'll probably have to go to a local landscape material yard to get it. Um, it's called different stuff in different parts of the country and the world, but we call it crusher run here. Um, but pretty much all it is, is it's crushed rock that also has fines in it. And that's important because that's when you compact this, it, it kind of, it compacts hard, almost as hard as concrete. Uh, if it were just larger stones like this, you, you could use something like that, but then it's gonna hold water all the time. The stuff with this fines, it's not gonna hold water. This, this stuff was more meant to shed water rather than to hold water. So I just need to wheelbarrow some of that over here to my hole, get it tamped. Um, like I say, we're shooting for about four inches. If you, you're using a hand tamp, you don't wanna put all four inches in at one time because then you're not really gonna be tamping the very bottom. I like to do two inches at a time. I'll do a two inch layer, tamp it, another two inch layer, tamp it, and then you're good to go. All right, the next step, we've got the base done. It's close enough to where we need it to be. Next step we take, these these are three quarter inch galvanized pipe they're three quarter inch inside which means they're right at one inch on the outside um, you can use pvc three quarter inch pvc if you like especially for something small like this would be perfectly fine i don't like using it because it has a little too much flex in it these are rigid enough where i can set these check my uh, check my check my level um, after they're set and I don't have to worry too much about them dipping as I'm screeding across the top of them because um, you know you'll, you'll set these in there you can check and hammer them down a little bit try to get it 
you know you could put a put a little rock underneath try to raise it up a little bit whatever you need to, to get it dialed in just right because uh, where you set these you, you pour your sand in then you screed your sand off the top and then that'll be that'll be your your paper bed that'll be exactly where your pavers go so these need to be set really accurately uh, Now, I just need to get some sand, screed it smooth, and I can start laying paper. All right, now I'm going to screed the sand. I usually just use my six foot level, uh, but it's a little too long. It's going to be kind of interfering with the dirt on this side, so. I went and ripped off this <laughs> this isn't the greatest option but it's got a straight enough edge for me to do this here went and ripped it off a pallet you can see how nice and smooth that is let me bring you down See, nice easy way to get it very smooth. Okay, once you get that done, now I can pop these screed bars out. Slip that out of there. Pull this one out. And I'll take some of this extra sand that's over here fill in that little hole. All right, I'm gonna lay this first big one in there. Okay, when you're laying your pavers, you need to use what's called the click and drop method. It means you need to pick up your paver. I'll demonstrate with this little one because it's gonna be easier. You need to pull it in. Where it's touching both sides of the other pavers in the corner and, and then drop it down like that. You don't want to set it in there and slide it in. It'll mush the sand up and you won't be able to pull it as close to the other pavers as you need to get it because the sand will be in the way. Click and drop is harder with these big ones. All right, we've got this laid in here. As you can see, the only areas I need cut, I need a small cut piece for here, and I need to trim a little bit off of this one. 
I'll just be using this 7 inch DeWalt angle grinder. Gotta put the right blade on it. Cut. Let's go put them in. Looks like I've actually got one other cut to make. This right here is still long. I didn't realize it. Next step is get these tamped down. I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to show you the lip we got here. As you can see this is still raised above the concrete a little bit. But I'm gonna use my mallet. Just knock it down. down a little too much on that side I'm just gonna add a little bit of sand back and tamp it down again Um, I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take this plate tamp and just go around and tamp them all down. You honestly could probably just get away with doing it with your mallet, but this is kind of easier to keep them level and smooth with each other. all right next step you need to secure some edging um generally the simplest thing simplest thing to do would just be to go your local store Lowe's Home Depot buy the plastic paver edging uh, and get steel like nine inch steel nails and boom this could be done quick and easy I'm actually gonna use concrete concrete is your other option because uh, that's what we're doing on the rest of the job I already have it and I like it better so if you were to use concrete what I do is I take my trowel and go straight down by the pavers pull out that sand so what you want you know you want to put it I come up half to two-thirds way up the block with the concrete and then try to slope it away into the ground um, that way you can put soil on top of the concrete still grow grass up close to these pavers but you need to kind of dig this out a little bit that way you got at least three inches or so of of concrete there if you try to pour less than three inches it's going to crack and break off and be ugly i'm just going to use my trowel here dig this stuff out a little bit get it out of the way Okay, that's all dug out. I'm gonna go mix up a bag of concrete. I just buy the 5,000 PSI shrink resistant, crack resistant 
concrete, normal stuff I get at Lowe's. All right, I've got my concrete mixed up. It's a little bit wetter than I like it, but I didn't have another bag to put in to dry and mix out. So it'll be all right. It's only a little bit wetter. laid in there. I'm just going to use my trowel to work it up the way I want it. All right, concrete is done. The last step we need to do is sand in the joints. You can either use your regular masonry sand like we used underneath, or you can use polymeric sand. Polymeric sand pretty much has a resin in it. You pour it in, sweep it in your joints, wet it, and then it sets up hard. Uh, either works, the polymeric sand I think is better, better at keeping weeds out and it stays in place longer. All right, once you get all your joints filled up, you want to go around with your tamp again and tamp this stuff. What that's going to do is going to vibrate that polymeric sand down into the joints. Any holes that open up, you go around and sweep it in and make sure you, you fill them up again. You want, to, you want to repeat that a couple times just to make sure these joints get nice and full. All right, and I'm gonna get my blower out and I'm gonna blow this off just to make sure all that dust is off because if you leave any dust on there after you wet it, it'll leave your blocks looking kind of hazy. You gotta be careful not to blow it all out of your joints, but.
all right and we're finished thank you all for watching uh that's all it takes to do a little little patio pad yourself some basic hand tools and a couple hours of time anyway if you like the video give us a thumbs up and we'll see you next time